So this is part two of my Tin Pan Alley sort of lesson series. We're doing the first 90 seconds of the live version, which I'll link in the description below. But as I said, this is the second video, so if you're starting uh, from scratch, um, best to go and watch the first one first. Again, that link will be in the description. Um, I'm doing these in chunks of 15 to 20 seconds, just so you can really get a hold of what's going on. And these first two sections are uh, not so complicated. Uh, and they're really good fun to learn and you get a little bit of Stevie Ray Vaughan um, style licks out of them. Well, I mean, they are Stevie Ray Vaughan licks, but you can add them into your own playing. In this one, we're leading up to the third lesson will be a more complicated thing to learn um, and to teach. Um, and I'm going to explain more of that near the end of the video. On top of that, near the end of the video, there's a bonus lick, which does appear later in the piece, but something you can learn now and sort of include in your playing, a really Stevie Ray Vaughan type lick that I love. Um, also near the end, I'll go through the gear that I've used today, but for now I want to jump straight into this lesson uh, and I hope you enjoy it. The other thing to mention, if you did the first lesson already where I was in standard tuning, in this one I've dropped to E flat tuning largely because I had to change my strings and all I had on hand was a very heavy set of 11 to 54 with a 22 uh, gauge G string, which is really hard to uh, work with. Um, so I've gone down uh, half a step. Um, you can do it yourself too if you don't already on your strat I find it it's a really nice way to play a strat anyway but I've stayed in the same position even though it will sound different so that the frets that I call out are the right frets for you um, hopefully that doesn't cause uh, too much problem um, yeah <laughs> So let's start off where we finished before. Okay, and then we're gonna bar the top three strings of the ninth fret, and then the top three strings of the seventh fret. So, so you can go down and up, or down, down. So very similar to what was earlier on, slide up and down from the ninth to the 10th and back on the third string, pull off to the seventh fret on the third string, and then hit the ninth fret of the fourth string twice. So, okay, and at this point in this live version, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan goes to the bridge pickup, which on my guitar is the wrong way around, and then he starts this run up from the seventh fret of the, the bottom E string, so it's just the pentatonic. So, seven, ten, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven. So bending up and down on the ninth fret of the third, and then hitting the ninth fret of the fourth, and then the 10th fret of the 2nd string and then you can uh, slide up and down or bend up and down it, um, it's up to you this time I think I prefer the bending slide okay and then after that it's the 7th of the 3rd uh, string and the 9th of the 4th string like that and then we're going to bend the ninth fret of the third string. So you're bending from the ninth to the eleventh on the third string. And then he slides up to the twelfth fret. So that was all in the first position of the pentatonic. And now we're going to the second. The second position. He's still in the bridge pickup. So then he's on the 12th for a while. And then we go from the 10th fret of the first string to the 12th fret of the second string. And then we're gonna bend up on the 12th fret of the first string. 
So you bending up from the 12. So it's somewhere between a one and two fret, fret, fret bend. It's got that very bluesy sound. So you bend up, down and pull off to the 10th fret. And then hit the 12th fret of the second string twice. So, so far we've got Okay, and then you can go back into the neck. So you slide from the 11th to the 13th fret. So we're now going up to the BB position, the third box really. So we slide from the 11th to the 13th on the third string. 12th fret of the B string. And then the 14th, the 12th and the 14th again of the top string. And then from there, we go down to the 10th fret of the first string. I put a tiny bit of a bend, it just feels like the right thing. So you pull off from the 12th fret to the 10th fret on the second string. And go down to the 7th fret. And then you hit the 7th fret of the 1st ring. So that section is... So, all together in this one we have... Okay, I'm going to stop here. Uh, I'm just going to play through everything we've done so far in a second. But we're then going to get to the really fast, crazy bits that is what everyone struggles with, including myself. And I see a lot of tutorials that basically just can't cover that. And um, what I'm going to do is in the next lesson, rather than trying to play the whole thing as fast as he does and cover it um, all, I'm going to break down some of the licks that he does in that fast bit slowly. And we'll go through those in that lesson. Um, the fast thing he does, which is a mixture of really fast sort of picking and raking. I mean, there's all sorts of bits where he'll rake over two or three strings, you know, and it all leads up. When you add the whole thing together, it's just an almost impossibly fast thing for, for most of us to do. So the best thing we can do is go through some of the licks, cut out some element of it, and it depends how fast you are, um, cut out some elements of it and try and put together something that sounds similar and good. Um, I think that's what a lot of people try to do. Um, I wanted to throw in a bonus lick today that's coming later um, after the next section, but it's one of those very Stevie Ray Vaughan things, so you could go away with this and add it into your playing. Um, it falls on the fourth chord, and uh, so let's say we, we, we finished a bit of, uh, you know, first position pentatonic. Then you're going to slide up from the 10th fret to the 11th fret. So slide up from the 10th to the 11th on the 5th string. And then the 9th fret of the 4th string. So four, uh, ninth fret of the 4th string and then back to the 11th fret of the 5th string. And then you're going to do the 12th fret of the 4th string. And the 9th fret again. So it... So you can finish it off like that. So you run down to the seventh of the fourth, and then the tenth, ninth, and uh, sorry, the ninth, eighth, and seventh of the fifth. Or go down to the fifth on the uh, fifth fret on the fifth string. Mm -hmm. 
And it's just one of those wonderfully SRV bluesy sounding things that I love. All right, I hope that was useful and uh, I thought I'd go through today's gear. It's the same Strat as last time, the Case Guitars um, 62 style Strat, which I really enjoy playing. And um, as I said, new strings, new big heavy strings that I'm trying out. I'm not sure they're for me. Um, my fingers are capable of doing all the bends, but it does fatigue more quickly. So for me, I think 10 to 48, 10 to 52 probably is best for me. Um, I know some people who do 10s, but add a much bigger string on the bottom, like a 58 that you can buy separately. And that might be something else I'll try as well. You get that big meaty bottom end, but it stays tight with those big strings. Um, today I use my classic reverb signature by Two Rock. In the first video, I'd use a tweed amp, a Lazy J, and I've got to say I enjoyed using that more, just cranking that up a little bit and getting that edge of breakup sound. It may not have been as accurate to Stevie Ray Vaughan's sound, being a tweed, but it was more fun to play. These Two Rock amps are much more tense, brittle, harder to work with. Um, but I did put a Blues Power by King Tone, one of my favorite pedals uh, in front of it. And that is um, not a Tube Screamer type, which you might expect. For me, when you're playing alone especially, the Tube Screamer just doesn't have enough low end and it's a bit nasal. So I like the Blues Power, which I think is based on the Timmy pedal. But anyway, not wanting to go into too much depth there. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty simple rig to, to play for SRV. You wanna get that edge of breakup with a bit of reverb um, whatever amp you prefer playing, I think always works best as opposed to trying to recreate his situation, which was probably with Dumble amps in most of these things that we're hearing. So not really realistic. So hopefully I'll get the next video out within the next week or so, and we'll start to tackle some of those more difficult parts. In the meantime, if you subscribe and comment, you'll be in on my giveaway of this protein pedal, uh, which is a blues breaker and a Nobles ODR1 style as a double pedal. Anywhere in the world, uh, when I hit seven and a half thousand subs, I'll pull a name out of the hat. All right, see you next time.